Mercedes. Wide chip, Ricky. Zebra left, 75, Katie. Omaha. Quick, go ahead. The Sleeper Wire Pro-Am is back. It's time to go eat, baby. <laughs> this is our third season and the biggest one yet. We had two leagues last year, and we're looking to double that this year. You, the listeners, get to play in a real fantasy football league with pros and shows from around the industry. Last year, we had a great roster. We had Marcus Grant, Jake Seeley, Matt Harmon, Sleeperbot, the Fantasy Football Fellas, Eat Sleep Fantasy, and many more. And we're expanding that to include more pros and shows than ever. Stop talking about it, man. Let's get this going right now. Visit www.sleeperwire.com slash proam for more details. Welcome, everybody, to the Sleeper Wire Show. I am your host, Professor Chris, and yes, we are back once again, and I am here with Dirty Jobs Mike. What's going on, man? What's happening, man? How we doing? I am doing awesome because we also have our Sleeper Wire Prophet, Hoos. What's up? Doing pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. How's it going, Chris? I am doing really well, and just so you guys know, this is episode 286. We're almost at 300. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It doesn't seem like we've done that. 286 episodes. That's 286 times you guys have gotten to listen to us. We've also got the Dynasty Wire show coming out, too. It's an exciting time. Yeah. Plus, uh, it's a vibe. It's it's, it's kind of football stuff, but not really. We've just got, like, crazy characters on there from time to time. But it's a good show. It's a good show. All right. So, as usual, we're going to kick it off here with our quick question of the show. It'll be usually not so quick, but maybe this one will be a little faster than before. Which one of these players has the best chance of finishing outside the top 10 at their position this year after they were in the top 10 at their position last year? LaShawn McCoy, Tyreek Hill, and Evan Ingram. And, Mike, I'm going to throw this to you. So, McCoy, Hill, and Ingram, who's got the best chance of not being a top 10? player at their position okay so the guy i feel like is going to finish outside of the top 10 uh will be evan ingram i mean as long as you get everybody healthy over there and you got rid of like brandon marshall so you have a little bit more depth on that team i think that he's probably going to be the guy that doesn't finish as good as he did last year just because i don't feel like the opportunities are going to be falling to him uh the way that they were last year if odell beckham gets hurt or something like that then everything's back on the table but with the addition of saquon barkley as well i mean it's going to be really tough to find the timeshare to get up in the top 10 so even with tight end being not a super deep position at all i mean the seven eight nine ten guys weren't even really uh, as good as you wanted them to be you still think they might finish above Ingram this year you know i really do i feel like I, i've got them ranked at my number 12 spot right now okay. so i mean just outside of the top 10 but just barely the dirty jobs hot take evan Ingram, number 12 who's what about you I'm going to go with Tariq Hill. I just feel like it's a different scheme of things going on there, you know, and, and with the quarterback there now, I, I I don't see him doing a lot of Alex Smith dump-offs. So, I mean, you got Sammy Watkins there. I think Mahomes is probably going to lock onto him more. I mean, I'm not very high on Watkins right now, but I still have to see more. And I, I just feel like Tyreek Hill right now is a tough buy. He's, he's getting drafted too high for me right now um and yeah i just can't buy into him being a top 10 guy this year um it's he's gonna need too many things to break his way and i just can't see it this year mccoy's gonna be fine uh you know he's gonna pretty much be the old offense out there he's gonna probably see a ton of passes and uh you know and ingram i i love ingram this year you know I, i'm not as high on him as some people are but he's still in my top 12 uh, I, I don't foresee him being like a top five guy or anything, but I think, you know, with that Pat Sherman offense, uh, you know, they, they still going to feature, you know, the tight end, you know, much, very much like Kyle Rudolph uh, was featured in, in, in the Vikings uh, offense. So I, I do like Evan Ingram a lot. I not as high on him, but I still see him finishing uh, top 12, given the tight ends uh, or it's even top 10 tight ends aren't really that special. You know, this year uh, we lost Hunter Henry. I could see him being a top 10 uh, so, yeah, definitely Tyree Kill for me. And you know what? I didn't even mean for... Guys, just so you know, we didn't even talk about this before the show started. Uh, I'm going to go with LaShawn McCoy. <laughs> so oh, each, wow. each one of us is going to have a different answer here. 
And that's purely based off of my rankings right now. I have okay. Tyreek Hill as my wide receiver 10, so I do have him top 10. I've got Evan Engram as my tight end 5, and LaShawn McCoy as my running back 11. So I do still have him as an RB1, but if we're going just based on top 10, I think LaShawn McCoy has the best chance to not finish in the top 10. There's just a couple guys I like a little bit ahead of him that I think could outscore him. Now, like you said... Kelvin Benjamin, if he goes down, maybe, you know, Sean McCoy, who's already going to get a pretty big workload, is going to get even bigger of a workload. But I, of of these three guys, I think he's got the worst chance to be a top ten uh, running back. Oh yeah, that's. I mean, I do have McCoy outside of my. I have McCoy a fourteen right now, but I I I have I have Hill fourteen as well in a PPR, and then I have uh, Ingram eight. So yeah, but oh, two two of those guys are not even. You know, top ten for me. Right. But if answering the question, yeah, I'd have to lean Hill. So you'd say uh, that Lashawn McCoy has a better chance to be in the top ten. Yeah, than Hill I, I just off of you know they they don't have Zay Jones. I feel like you know like he's gonna they don't have much out there. So I feel like they're gonna have to lean on him a little bit more. So I think he's gonna be a little bit safer. But you brought up some very valid points. I like it. I like it. Uh, I don't know if there's ever been a time where the three of us have been on a show and we all had different answers to the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's yeah you gotta mark it down. It's a good thing though. I mean I like for, it. Whoever wants to hear it. Episode two eighty six. <laughs> <laughs> Only took us that many episodes to get here. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and get to the news. Kicking it off here, Kareem Hunt allegedly punched a guy at an Ohio resort. I'm not sure what an Ohio resort is, uh, but allegedly punched a guy there. Nobody was arrested and no injuries were reported. I'm not sure why this even made the news, but, um, yeah, do you guys think anything is going to come of this? Um. Well, I mean, this is his second what like his second antic i guess one in the off season i know he had that first one with uh apparently they they said he pushed a girl or something um this one apparently i don't know ohio resort kind of, maybe it sounds like it kind of sounds like a massage parlor i don't know <laughs> but, yeah, maybe like a casino um, resort or something or? could be could be but i mean they might i mean zeke didn't get arrested so i mean he still got suspended um his second time you know, being mixed up in the news this early is not good. You know, typically they start, you know, um, if they're going to suspend a guy, it's pretty soon. It, and I feel like it usually breaks off of the perception of everybody that's out there chattering, you know. And although we did see that, I didn't see much of it like heavily driven. So it, maybe it will die down and then maybe it gets swept under the rug. Uh, if he does miss any games, maybe it's like two. I don't see them trying to dole out like you know six and even if he does miss two you're still going to use them i've seen some people on a, on a chat of mine on twitter they were just having fun uh chatting if spencer Ware would take snaps from him you know like where's not even healthy right now <laughs> so I'm like, he's, he's gonna be fine I'm, I'm not worried about uh hunt whether or not if he misses a game or two uh you know it's andy reed's gonna be andy reed anyway so I mean, he was probably gonna use him inefficiently those first couple games anyway so i, I think he's still gonna be fine for you Mike, what about you? Um, you know, I feel like Kareem Hunt is, I don't know, he's hes going to be good next year. I mean, he's going to get the serviceable workload. I, I don't know. I feel like he's going to be just fine. I, I think it with the with the whole punching in the face thing, like, I, I just don't feel like he's going to miss any time. I just don't think that this, especially there was no damage done. That would kind of be, right. wouldn't you guys be embarrassed with that news? Like you punched, punched a guy, guy and he in wasn't hurt, and nobody got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, yeah. I don't know. To me, I'd be pretty sad if I was Kareem Hunt right now. Yeah, I, I just like I said, I feel like he's going to get the same workload. I don't feel like he's going to get suspended. Like I think he'll be fine. I think Kareem Hunt's going to be fantastic. Now I don't want to start like a, a men versus women, what's okay, what's not okay debate here. But in the eyes of the NFL, do you would you guys right. say that it's less serious in their eyes for a man to hit another man absolutely i think the key phrase there is domestic so i mean if it were a same-sex couple for instance and a guy hit a guy i think the nfl would take that just as serious as they would a guy hitting a woman because again the word domestic violence is thrown in there i think that's the key and the key factor for that uh for the suspensions and whatnot i like it that's a good thought i hadn't even thought about that what about you who's yeah, I tend to agree there. I mean, 
dude on dude. I mean, dude on dude. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, yeah, you don't really. You know, I, I don't think no one's looking at it as much, and I think maybe that's one of the reasons why it did come out in you know this the story. But again, you didn't see it many places. You saw some people retweeting it, but no one was really pushing it out there. Like, oh my god, you know, like what happened with Zeke? I mean, it was no woman involved, or you know, some of the other situations there was no woman involved. You know, so. Um, but then again, you know, th- again, this happened earlier with him with a woman that apparently he pushed her or something like that. And it still seemed to be swept on the rug. But like Mike was saying, it, domestic could be the issue because it's clearly in there. Domestic um, now, obviously, hitting a woman is bad anyway. But apparently they, you know, they got their stories straight. So hopefully he doesn't miss any time. But this second story does not, you know, it's not too cool, but. I don't know. It's probably nothing much. You know, it's it's probably just a slow, a slow news day type of you know story. Yep, I agree. I don't think he's going to miss any time either. But moving on, we do have some good news here. Doug Peterson said that Carson Wentz has been cleared for some seven on seven work at OTAs. And Chris Mortensen from ESPN said that he's starting to believe that Wentz will be ready for Week One. Uh, Mortensen's comment doesn't really sway me as much as the fact that he's been cleared already to do some work at right. OTAs. That leads me to believe that he's going to be ready for week one. Yeah. I mean, I think it sounds to me like he's going to be ready for preseason work. Yeah. Like I said, cue up Westworld. He might be a Westworld in. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I still got to catch up on the season. <laughs> I'm two episodes behind, so don't ruin anything else, Mike. <laughs> I won't. But yeah, great news for Carson Wentz. Great news for the Eagles. Uh, let's go ahead and move on, though, because I feel like we're going to get some more news from Carson Wentz coming up next week. We really don't need to spe- uh, speculate on it at this point, but that is great news. Some other good news, though, from the Vikings. Dalvin Cook has been getting reps in team drills at OTAs as well. So coming off of that ACL tear from early on in the 2017 season, he's already getting reps. And Kyle Rudolph, who had an ankle surgery over the offseason, is participating in... Uh, team drills as well so two really big parts of the vikings offense both on track to you know be ready for training camp huge yeah yeah this is huge this i'm excited i like i said kyle rudolph last week i mean i'm really big on this guy with uh with Kirk cousins up there at the helm so i i'm I'm excited to see he's back in practice because that'd be really hard to be a top five tight end if you don't play next year so (laughs) Yeah, you, you know what's really cool? Yeah. I, I've told you guys about the new job that I got working at the brewery this summer, where I, you know it's called the beer ambassador position. Super cool. That's only a half mile away from uh, Vikings training camp. Oh, that's awesome! So I'm hoping I'll get a chance to meet some players. They'll come in and I'll uh, tell them how to pour foamy beer. And uh, <laughs> just kidding. Only it's... only when uh, only when maybe some uh, Packers come in, I'll show them how to pour foamy beer. But. <laughs> it's funny because I'm finding myself becoming a vicarious fan of certain teams because of the locations of where my friends are, you know, like, so with you, I'm like, well, go Vikings. I'm like, I'm sure you'll go catch a couple Vikings games. I've even caught myself watching a little twins action. So, yeah, I went to my first <laughs> twins game last week. They had a walk off homer. It was pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it's always, always great to be in a walk off game, man. That's the best. Yep. It was a blast. Uh, let's move on here. Ron Rivera said that Christian McCaffrey is able to handle a big workload, which is not really a surprise uh, for anybody that saw his stats in college. I mean, he was the definition of a workhorse running back in college. We've seen him handle this workload. And did you guys see that picture that was uh, tweeted out by the Panthers earlier this season? Uh, just how muscular, how big McCaffrey's arms actually are? Yeah. The dude is huge, man. He's a monster. And and he's a McCaffrey. I don't know if you guys were familiar, but I watched that guy's whole career uh, in Denver. And, I mean, that guy was just the definition of pain and abuse. He could just take it and keep going. I mean, catch after catch, hit after hit. I believe he might have been one of the very first uh, wide receivers to start going out there without certain pads to make him faster. Like, I mean – the McCaffreys are a tough family. The this is he's the real deal. Yeah, I mean it's, it's McCaffrey. Uh, I'm still, I'm, I don't know. I, I'm still not as high on McCaffrey this season just because of C.J. Anderson. Um, I know he's going to get work, you know, but Ooh, I don't see him having Anderson. the same. <laughs> I just don't see him having <laughs> the same season that he did last year. Um, I don't see him being a, a top ten guy. You know, um, I think he was top ten in PPR. And I just think there's going to be too many guys that come back um, that's going to push him out the way. He's still going to be good. You know, I see him like top 15 or so. 
So, but uh, you know, I get maybe like a two point average off of you know what this, those top ten guys are doing. Uh, yeah, I just think that he's not gonna. He's probably gonna lose a lot of the touchdowns on the ground uh, to to CJ Anderson. I mean, the guy was good. He got a thousand yards last year. Uh, you know, uh, not good. You know, for the team obviously, but he. You know, he. He was still able to muster up uh, some some fantasy for you in in spots uh, if you were able to get rid of him early, like uh, he dirty jobs told you many times to. Then you know, hopefully, he didn't hurt you too much. Yeah, pick draft him this year, <laughs> trade him after week three. Yep. Amen. <laughs> Carlos Hyde. Record, that's that's what I thought about Carlos Hyde this year. Draft that's him. That's a good one. And then too. trade him. <laughs> trade him. Trade him after week yep. four. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, for the record, did finish at as the RB10 in PPR last year. I've got him as my RB12 going into this season in PPR. Mike, do you have your rankings done by any chance? I do. Yeah, let me look really quick. Where do I have him? I have him at my 14. Okay. Nice. So we have him right on that. We all have him on that RB1, RB2 yeah, cusp yeah. right there. Yeah. And going back, I have Evan Ingram as my 6, not my 12. So <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say 12 was, sounded way, way too low. That. And LaShawn McCoy is nine, so if I was to make the argument, uh, Tyreek Hill was outside of the top ten, no, but only at go. 11. Oh, only man. 11. See, I thought it took us 286 episodes to disagree, <laughs> Apparently, we're, we're maybe it'll it. take 287. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, just a couple more pieces of news here. The Jets' fourth-round pick tight end Chris Herndon was arrested for a DUI, so just – you know, further proving that my bet with Hoos was just a horrible idea. Yeah. For those of you who weren't listening earlier on in the offseason, I it must have been back in February or March. I bet Hoos that less than five NFL players would be arrested this offseason, and it's probably closer to fifteen. Well over. Yeah. Yeah, it's Dude, well a over. A lot of NFL players get arrested when you pay yeah. attention to it. It's I mean, a rest season. They're a troublesome crew. It's a rest <laughs> season. It's a rest season. It's off season. It's a rest season. I yeah. Feel like. You know, I mean, just don't arrest any of my guys. You know, just don't. You know, I'm glad Kareem Hunt didn't get arrested. Don't arrest any of my guys. Well, ho- probably you didn't Anderson, have sorry. Chris Herndon on your any of your teams anyway. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Last piece of news here. This is good news. It's not coming from a coach. It's actually coming from a player. Adam Vinatieri, in regards to Andrew Luck, said, we will see him. I really don't have a doubt. And the fact that this came from a player – means a lot to me as a Colts fan. Yeah. Yep. But he doesn't specify like on the sidelines or <laughs> he, like he's he like no we will see Andrew Luck. He's coming to we'll my see birthday. Him. He will not be <laughs> invisible. He's going to be, be in the building, building somewhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, so well, I mean, I took that as good news. Also, I think that Vinatieri only needs fifty-eight points to become the NFL's all-time leading scorer. That's awesome. He'll get that points. like week four. Oh yeah, that's nineteen field goals and an extra point. That's it. Yeah, and that's assuming the Colts only score one touchdown, which with Jacoby Brissett, maybe. <laughs> that might happen. <laughs> um, Marlon yeah. Mack carrying the ball. So yeah, so he's most likely going to be the uh, top scorer of all time. So that's pretty cool. Anything else in the news, guys? I don't think anything else came out since our last show. Um, maybe the uh, Reuben Foster is pleading no contest to the charges instead of uh, no, not guilty. So uh, NFL is certainly going to pass down some judgment, some discipline on him. He might not even play anymore. All right, let's go ahead and get into our main segment for the show. We're going to talk about players who either will or won't repeat a top 10 performance this year. So kind of related to our first quick question at the beginning of the show. So top 10 repeats, and we're going to kick off with quarterbacks. So which of these players will probably not finish in the top 10? So in order, the top 10 quarterbacks last season, Russell Wilson, Cam Newton, Tom Brady, Alex Smith, Carson Wentz, Kirk Cousins, Matthew Stafford, Philip Rivers, Drew Brees at 9, and Ben Roethlisberger at 10. So of those 10 guys, who has the best chance of not finishing in the top 10? It doesn't have to be just one player. If you think a couple of these guys aren't going to be top 10 this year, let's go with a couple of them. Mike, let's kick it off with you here. So for me, it was Alex Smith. He's the guy that kind of sticks out on this list. I don't really think he has the weapons that he's used to when he went over to Washington. And, I mean, if you look at how long it took him to develop with those weapons in Kansas City, the outlook really isn't good. I mean, the guy wasn't used to being a top-10 quarterback. I mean, last year he came out and he was phenomenal. But I really feel like a lot of that 
was Kelsey Hill and Hunt. I mean, when you've got that kind of a skill set surrounding you, you could throw a guy like me in there and I could be a top 10 quarterback, you know? <laughs> so I feel like, I mean, you go over to like Jameson Crowder. Uh, I like Geese, Geese, whatever, Geese, Geese. however Geese. you pronounce Geese. that guy's name. <laughs> I've said it like 50 different ways already. But like, I mean, I like those guys, but I just don't feel like they have the talent or the skill level that the that the Kansas City Chiefs had on that offense. So do you think Mahomes is going to be top 10 this year? I do. Accidentally, I think he's going to – I mean, I don't think it's going to be by any fault of his or by any – like I said, I mean, you could almost throw anybody in there. With that with that team and with that line, good things will happen. Uh, is there anybody else you think won't finish there? I think Staff, I Stafford, I like the Rivers, this, Breeze, yeah. Roethlisberger are all going to be top 10? I mean – yeah, I like all these guys in my top ten. Yep. What about you, Hoos? Man, quarterbacks are so weird. Um, I'm going to stab at top ten. Man, I'm going to – so Alex Smith, um, I'm going to say Stafford has a chance to finish outside of top ten. I have him at ten right now. But I could see – right now I have Andrew Luck at 12. So I can see him bumping back – you know, into the top ten and bumping Stafford out. Um Kirk Cousins is definitely the other one. Um, I'm not. Ooh. I don't want to say I'm not a fan of of him. I just, you know, it's. I I don't see him finishing in the top ten. Uh, it's I, it's a lot of parameters. It's just going to be different. I, I can't put him in my top ten right now. I have him thirteen. Um, so he's outside of even my top twelve. Okay, and there were a couple of guys who were noted. Uh, noticeably absent on here, and that was Aaron Rodgers and Deshaun Watson. And Rodgers, I think most of the people are going to have him ranked as their QB one next year. I know I do. Uh, he's not on this list. He's going to be back in the top ten, barring you know another season-ending injury. So that's going to bump somebody down. But Deshaun Watson, I also have him as my QB six. So him coming in there is going to bump somebody down as well. I actually think I have two of these guys outside of my top ten, and that's Alex Smith and Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, so I don't think either one of them is going to be top ten. Now, Roethlisberger, I have at eleven, so I think he's going to be a QB one. But as far as top ten goes, I just like Rodgers and Watson a little bit better. Let's go ahead and move to tight ends now. So we've got in order from 1 through 10. Now we're going to go with uh, PPR scoring for these ones. We just don't have time to do PPR and standard. And PPR is the one that's a little bit more popular. So number one, Travis Kelsey. Rob Gronkowski was number two. At number three was Zach Ertz. Delaney Walker at four. Evan Engram at five. Jimmy Graham finished at six. Seven was Jack Doyle. Eight was Kyle Rudolph. And then nine was Jason Witten, but he retired. So we're going to go ahead and bring in Cameron Bray and Benjamin Watson. So Watson was 11, but since Witten retired, we'll just put him at 10 for the sake of the argument. So of these 10 guys, who do you think might not finish in the top 10? We'll go with Doyle. I'm um, going to go with Graham and Watson here. Doyle, Graham, and Watson. So who do you like above Jimmy Graham? Uh, I, I like Kyle Rudolph. I like Braid. Um, let me go to my rankings. I also like – who else do I like above Jimmy Graham? Jimmy, right now I have Jimmy Graham. Uh, eesh, I have Jimmy Graham 12, actually. <laughs> I have um, Ricky Seals-Jones over as Jimmy Graham. Wow. Alan Ingram, Tyler Eifert. Greg Olson, Cameron Braid, Rudolph, Reed, Walker, Kelsey Ertz, Gronk, obviously. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, I, I don't, you know, I'm, it's a lot of weapons that's added there. I don't see Jimmy Graham just being the answer. Um, I, I, I'm just, yeah, I still have him top 12, but I don't see him being the, the answer that a lot of people envision him being, so. Yeah, and I feel like a lot that we're going to have very similar answers for most of the tight end position as to who's going to finish in the top 10. Just let's face it, tight end is such a weak position after like the yeah. top five or six yeah. guys. Even really after the top three guys, it's kind of weak. What about right. you, Mike? Um, well, outside of my top 10, I actually have quite a few of these names, unfortunately. But I mean, my 11 and my 12 is Jack Doyle and Cameron Bray. So those guys are right up in there. I just don't see them finishing top 10. I like a lot of the other options better. Uh, a lot of this, of course, obviously, barring on like people like Tyler Eifert staying healthy. Um, I'm probably a lot higher on Trey Burton than a lot of people, a lot of other people are. Um, I would say other yes. Other than that, yeah, and see, and I mean, I like still have Ben Watson down clear at 23. I mean, even though he finished number 11 last year, I like that dynamic. I just don't like the 
I think there's going to be a lot of shakeups in Baltimore this year. I think they're going to kind of start finding maybe a different direction. That's a good thing. Watson's Blackwell. on the Saints then. Oh, Saints. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I forgot he went home to the Saints. So even there, like I, I said it last week, I just don't feel like they've been involving him in New Orleans as much as they the tight end position. They haven't been using right. that since Jimmy Graham left. I mean, yeah. there hasn't really been a guy coming out of there. We had a Colby Fleener forever that we thought was going to be a big deal, and he just never did anything. And granted, there's a huge difference in talent there, but they just don't use them. They don't need to use them. They've got two great running backs, and then they can just hit you deep when you start stacking the box. So those three guys are out of the top ten for me. I think Jimmy Graham actually finishes around seven to ten, somewhere in that window. Uh, I think you'll see Aaron Rodgers start using a tight end. And the only guy for me that I have uh, currently ranked outside of the top 10 is Ben Watson. I've got him as my tight end 15. The other guys I do still all have in my top 10. I have Cameron Bray at my tight end 10. I'm, you know, still higher on him than most, not quite as high as Hoos is. But of these guys, I think most of them are going to finish top 10. Watson, maybe a little bit outside of it. Let's go ahead and move to wide receivers, though, because I have a feeling we're going to have much more variance when we talk (laughs) about wide receivers and running backs. All right, so wide receivers, 1 through 10 last year. Antonio Brown was number 1. DeAndre Hopkins was number 2. Number 3 was Keenan Allen. 4 was Larry Fitzgerald. Jarvis Landry came in at number 5 with a great season. Michael Thomas at 6. Julio Jones at 7. 8 was Tyreek Hill. 9 was Adam Thielen. And then A.J. Green at 10. And Hoos, let's give you a start uh, for this one. Which uh, which of these guys do you think might not finish as a top 10 wide receiver this year? Uh, man, um, so I, I gave you Hill. Uh, I'm going to say Thielen as well. He's not going to be in the top 10. Uh, other than that, oh, yeah, Larry Fitzgerald as well. Larry Fitzgerald. Other than that, this list is pretty solid. Um, I don't see much interchanging. Uh, but, yeah, Hill, uh, Thielen, and Fitzgerald, but not by much. I I don't see him finishing four. I could see him you know, finishing around 12 or so. But um, you, we just don't know if you know he's going to be the favorite target there. What about you, Mike? Um, I've got Thielen uh, as my number 10, so he's right in there. I told you about Tyreek Hill being my number 11. I just uh, – the new quarterback situation over there, and there's just 10 guys I like more than him in his situation, unfortunately. And then Larry Fitzgerald, I actually have him clear down at 17 just because I'm so unsure about that quarterback situation. It's not a question about his talent. It's a question about the leadership on that team. I mean – I like Sam Bradford, and I think he's a great quarterback. I just think I, I'm just not sold on him going to that system. So that's the only two guys I've got out of that. Do you guys uh, have both? You know have... What? I, I completely, yeah, no, I know what you're going to say. Chris. Do you both have Jarvis <laughs> no, Landry in no, your top ten? No, no, I just completely. He, he was like invisible there for me for a second. I was like, no, Jarvis Landry, yeah, he looks good. <laughs> Neither like, of you brought him glance, up, and like, I was oh, like, yeah, what are you talking? Are you kidding? Me? <laughs> at first glance, it's like it's Jarvis Landry. He looks good to me. So, yeah, Jarvis Landry's <laughs> in my twenty-five. So. Yeah, he's way the heck out of there for me. Yeah. So you guys, he wasn't even worth talking about. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even notice his name. Yeah, on the list. I guess that's, that's what, what it was. Happened. Yeah, that's yep. complete. It was just like what? I'm like, what's yeah. he doing up there with all these guys? Right. <laughs> I had a, had an awesome season in PPR last year. When yeah. it comes to mine, I agree with uh, some of the players you guys mentioned. Now in the top ten, some guys who I think are going to be there this year. Odell's going to be back in the top 10. I think Devontae Adams is going to be up there, and I think Mike Evans has another top 10 season. I think he bounces back. So that's three guys that have to get bounced for me there. I think Jarvis Landry, Larry Fitzgerald, and Adam Thielen as well. I don't think any of those guys are going to be top 10. I do have uh, Adam Thielen at 11 and Larry Fitzgerald at 12. Jarvis Landry down there at 22. So I do have him as 11 and 12, so I do still have him as wide receiver ones. But as far as top 10 goes, I think they get bounced by... OBJ, Devontae Adams, and Evans. See, and I have Thielen at 10 and Tyree Kill at 11. Okay. So, I mean, I mean, we're right there on the line with both of those guys. But we can all agree on uh, Landry and Fitzgerald. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Well, let's move to running backs here. So, I'm assuming that uh, some of these guys that finish in the top 10 are probably not going to do it this year. Todd Gurley, Le'Veon Bell, Alvin Kamara, that was your 1-2-3. Kareem Hunt was 4. Melvin Gordon was 5. Mark Ingram at 6, LaShawn McCoy at 7, 
Carlos Hyde, 8. Number 9 was Leonard Fournette, and Christian McCaffrey finished at number 10. And I think we can go ahead and throw Mark Ingram out. That four-game suspension, and right. with, you know, how good Kamara has been and how great I think he's going to be this year, especially after he gets that backfield nearly to himself for four games, uh, I don't think Mark Ingram's going to be top 10. No, no way. I have him at 19 because I like his opportunity, but it's, yeah, the four-game suspension really knocked him down for me. And then uh, as far as the rest of them go, I have Kareem Hunt right at 10 on this list as well. And then so everybody else on there uh, pretty much made the top 10. And then Carlos Hyde, Christian McCaffrey, those guys didn't make the list. Uh, Christian McCaffrey's just outside of it at 14, but I have Carlos Hyde way down there. I've got him at number 24 because of just all the all the options. They got Chubb. They got Duke Johnson Jr. I just really think that they're going to probably utilize a little bit more Duke and a little bit more Chubb than they are Coleman – or I'm sorry, Carlos Hyde down the stretch. I mean, he's just not going to be the full-time guy. And I like Carlos Hyde a lot, and I've slept on him for years. And last year I was actually pretty high on the guy – in a lot of situations and he did great he's a great ppr beast but i just feel like i don't know i feel like duke johnson has earned the job as a pass catching back and i i just think it's a matter of time before you start seeing him incorporating chubb more yeah i've actually got carlos hyde super low i've got him down at 38 and i'm not saying he's going to produce rb4 numbers for you all season i think he's going to be pretty solid early on in the season but I agree with you. I think he's going to fade. I think we're going to see more Nick Chubb, and Duke Johnson clearly has a role. That's not going right. away. He's clearly got a role. Yeah. yeah, he's earned it. He's just too good to ignore. Right. And there are a couple of guys here who didn't make the top 10 or in finishes last year. Zeke, due to having that six-game suspension, he still finished as the RB12, even missing six games, which is incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dalvin Cook. Also missed a whole bunch of games. I have him inside of my top 10 as well. If we're going for guys who I don't think are going to finish top 10, Ingram for sure. We can all agree on Carlos Hyde. Uh, LaShawn McCoy and Christian McCaffrey for me are the ones who have the best chance outside of those first two of not being in the top 10. Yeah, and I'm pretty much agreeing with all of those picks there. Um, I'm a little higher on Ingram. I still have Ingram 14. I know... uh, Mike has him as uh, 18. That's that's not too far from where I have him. But I still see him, you know, being close to top 12. It's because he he didn't do much those first four games when AP was there. uh, But he still ended up having the top, you know, top 10 season. But, yeah, I could definitely see, you know, McCaffrey not being there, Carlos Hyde. I've got Carlos Hyde at 36 right now, so I'm still low on him as well. But same reasons, you know, I, I see him starting the season off hot. Or, you know, decent, you know, you can use them. Uh, after that, you're going to have to get them up out of your team because uh, Chubb's definitely going to take over, I feel. Uh, and they're definitely going to use Duke Johnson. I've got Duke Johnson at 23 right now in a PPR. Um, but, yeah, as, as far as, you know, it, McCoy, you know, he's I, you know, he's definitely not going to be top. Well, I don't want to say definitely, but I, I can't put him in my top 10 either. Uh, I have him closer. Where now? I have him right now 14. So, um yeah, all, all of these guys, it's 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 a lot of shakeup, and this is one of the reasons why I'm not so high on grabbing running backs early because they're so it, it changes so much, you know, like the the position changes so often, you know. Look at you know a lot of guys that could just bust, you know, because of whatever happens, you know. I mean, look at Todd Gurley, uh, the year he busted, you know, it's it, no one foresaw that coming. You know, I mean, you could blame the coach, obviously. <laughs> it was terrible. But it happens. You know, running backs, they bust. Wide receivers, not so much. Um, so, yeah, you're always going to see this position change very often. So it's really annoying. And that's one of the reasons why I don't even, you know, like drafting running backs that early. It's it's funny because it's rare you find the moment where you disagree with somebody, but you can't argue with them. Like, I'm like... <laughs> I'm like I, I I don't agree because I feel like you need to go running back heavy, but you're so, so right about the fact that they can bust so often. I mean, you grab these running backs early and they just don't do what you think they're gonna do. Especially you. like, you know, the first few weeks and things like that when you start really speculating on 
what the hell these guys are going to be involved in and everything like that. But then you, those solid receivers, they're just there week in, week out, doing their thing, catching passes, catching touchdowns. So I'm right there with you. Like I said, I disagree because I feel like running back will be the biggest emphasis on this year's draft. But at the same time, man, you can get so many good receivers if you wait. Yeah, I feel, I feel like Hoos was making the argument for why it's important to draft running back heavy early. <laughs> it is such no, a volatile no, position. It's so like you want the yeah, depth. But you, they're gonna, you take a running back early, right? Say you take Kareem Hunt, and for some reason he gets suspended, and then when he comes back, he's not the same guy or whatever, and he reads, you know, screwing around with him, whatever, and he completely busts for you. Completely busts for you. And it's like you could have grabbed, you know, OBJ there. Or you could have grabbed, you know, someone that was going to be solid because they were going to see targets because they were the best player on the team. You could have grabbed AJ Green or something like that. Uh, you know, someone who's guaranteed and less injury, they were going to see get at least eight touchdowns or you know get a thousand yards, get ninety receptions. It's it, you know it rarely happens. You, even Julio Jones when he was terrible, he was still great. You know AJ Green was just terrible, he was still great, and he still finished the top. Ten guy, I mean, there's you can't have the same arguments about running backs, you know, like the the top ten guys that we're talking about right now. We have four that's not going to be there, you know, it, and so it's just like that's. I feel like I can find a uh, running back, especially in the PPR. You know, you got Duke Johnson, you got Chris Thompson. There's got so many guys that's going to be out there catching passes. You know, it's you know, it's it's points. So I mean, you, you can get by when you stack your team with the rest of the with your roster, especially with those top tier uh, wide receivers that you never have to move out of your lineup. Right. Absolutely. And you know what? As much as I always want to grab running backs early, I just you don't about do those it. Wide receivers. I just and then I end up grabbing like five wide receivers in a row, which is insane. But I still end up in the finals, you know, just about every year doing the same strategy. And I try to deviate from it sometimes, but it's what I end up the happiest with the most. You Where did know, you I finish up, in the sleeper wire league last year? Uh, I busted that year. I mean, <laughs> that was terrible. I did not. I did not employ that strategy at all. Who won that league like, again? <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh now. please! Oh man! <laughs> You're gonna get crushed this year. I can't wait. Uh, you know so what? Bad. Someone else has to win either. in order for that to be true. So yeah, yeah that's oh. true. I have won 100 percent of the sleeper wire leagues that we've done since last year. <laughs> oh, 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 that's 100 oh, <laughs> like since last year. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you do you remember the like... sleeper bot error where they pulled Alex Smith off my bench? Oh, and then, yeah. Like I've tested multiple times, Alex Smith would have played better had he known that he was on my team. <laughs> but when he saw that I benched him, he got all sad and had a bad game. Yeah, that's what it was. That's, that's what exactly was. what it was. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hey, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the show. As we mentioned at the beginning, as you guys heard, as you guys know, Sleeper Wire is a charity who is dedicated to making a difference in people's lives. It's the whole reason we do the show, the whole reason we do the Sleeper Wire Pro-Am. It's this awesome league that we do with pros and shows from around the industry. We have some great names coming up in this year's uh, Pro-Am, and... You guys have listened to the show in the past couple weeks. You've heard some of them, but we're going to have an official list coming out here pretty soon. So we're going to uh, keep that whole official list to ourselves until we release that information. But to enter for a chance to play in the Pro-Am with us and big names around the fantasy football industry, it's easy. Go to GoFundMe.com slash RobJR and donate. Every multiple of $10 gets you a raffle ticket for the Pro-Am. So donate 10 bucks, It's one ticket. 30 bucks gets you three tickets. 100 bucks gets you 10 tickets. Um, if you want to donate a thousand bucks, we'll just put you in there automatically. That'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, and go to sleeperwire.com slash pro am for more details. Also, follow us on Twitter at sleeperwire show. You can follow me on there at Seymour Sleeperwire. Mike is on there at Dr. Kane21. Hoose is on there at sleeperwire Hoose. Find us on sleeperbot at Professor Chris at Dirty Jobs and Profit Hoose and on the Fantasy Life app. At Professor Chris, Dirty Jobs, and Who's the Prophet? Well, Mike, Who's? This was fun. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh man, no, Heck no yeah. need to thank us. Thank you, man. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I appreciate Always that. Always a good time. Always fun. I Always. have to reiterate too. I have to throw this out there. You are gonna want to be in this pro am this year, man. Yes. The names, 
Oh just man, legends out there! It's gonna man. be a fun league. You're gonna want to try to beat these guys to to test your muster to see what you got. To test your muster. Is that a Wyoming saying? I've heard that before. It is. Really? Muster. <laughs> muster. Not muster. I think you, you test, test your, your mustard. mustard. You just need it. <laughs> <laughs> like, is, this, is this expiration date a real thing? Do I need to test my mustard? <laughs> it's like box. It's like boxy. Mustard. Oh, I like it. Mustard. I like it. Well, let's go ahead and leave it on yeah, that note. Thanks hey, for listening, guys. We'll catch you next time. Thanks. Hey.